It's a new King Hardcore, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. This is the 10 Minute Sports Report brought to you by no one. I am your host, Captain Boring. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and share with all of your friends so that they too can bask in the glory of me violating your ear holes for the next 10 minutes. There is a new champion of the hard court. Today is Tuesday, June 13th, 2023. This is your 10 Minute Sports Report. The Denver Nuggets took five games, but they did it, and they did it well. It was a hard-fought game from beginning to end. They had to battle back from a 10-point deficit at one time in the second half. They actually, at one point, also had a 10-point lead in the first half that then let that slip away. The Denver Nuggets beat the Miami Heat. In the series by a final score of 4-1, to one. they win Game 5, 94-89 to close them out at home. It was a terrible shooting night for them. They only shot 18% from 3, 5 of 28 in total. Uh, from the floor, they shot 49% and only 56% of the line, so they tried to give it away. However, the Miami Heat didn't fare much better 34 percent from the floor 25 percent from three they did shoot 87 percent from the free throw line Nikola Jokic who won finals MVP was outstanding yet again 28 points 16 rebounds four assists Jamal Murray his running mate had 14 points eight rebounds and eight assists so almost another triple double for him the big talk will be where does Jokic lie in the grand scheme of most dominant big man of all time, most skilled big man of all time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's just put those arguments aside until he's finished playing, I would say. However, he is on his way. I think the more compelling story here is Jimmy Butler was trash. In all but one game of this series, Jimmy Butler did not show up until the final three and a half minutes or so last night. He went five of 18, two for five from three. He did make nine of his 11 free throws. He finished with 21 points, three rebounds, five assists. He was awful last night. Late in game, it looked like he basically stood in the corner. It looked like he didn't even want to touch the ball. Not sure what that's about. But he was downright awful. The Miami Heat very well and probably should have won this game if Jimmy Butler was great. They probably should still be playing in this series. This game probably could easily be a seven-game series. Either way, I felt like the Miami Heat could have won at least two other games in this series if Jimmy Butler had showed up. He did not. The Miami Heat once again are runners up. This time, the Denver Nuggets get it done and they are your 2023 NBA champions. Just some more snacks. For, some more snacks. Ooh, I like snacks. Just some more stats to back up how Nikola Jokic is the best player in the world in basketball right now. He is the first player in NBA history to lead all players in points, rebounds, and assists in a single postseason. He is the first player in NBA history with 500 points, 250 rebounds, and 150 assists in a single postseason. He is the second player to average 25 points, 10 rebounds, 5 assists in 4 series in a single postseason. LeBron James was the other one. He is the third player to average 30 points, 10 rebounds, and 9 assists in a single postseason. Russell Westbrook did it in 2017. Oscar Robinson did it in 1963. He's the fourth player in NBA history to win a franchise's first two MVPs and its first finals MVP. LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He is the fourth player, or I'm sorry, he's the fourth center in NBA history to earn multiple MVP and MVPs and final MVPs. MVP. I said MVP there way too much, but that's all right. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Wilt Chamberlain, and Moses Malone. He is the sixth player to record a 25 point, 15 rebounds while shooting 75% from the field of an NBA Finals game. He matches Shaquille O'Neal in 2004, Larry Bird in 1984, Cedric Maxwell 81, Wilt Chamberlain 72, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar 71. He is the sixth player outside of 
of the U.S. to win Finals MVP. Giannis, Tim Duncan, Dirk Nowinski, Hakeem Olajuwon, and Tony Parker all are along for the ride with him. He is the 10th player in triple doubles. Uh, I'm sorry, he recorded 10 triple doubles in this postseason, most of all time. And he was the 41st pick selected by by the Denver Nuggets in the 2014 draft during a Taco Bell Quesarito commercial. And yes, that last one absolutely is true. So that's where he falls currently among some of the greats as long as he stays healthy and in shape. I don't see why he won't be able to make even more of a name for himself. The Florida Panthers are on the brink of elimination, and their star is on the brink of just writing it in. Matthew Kachuk and the Florida Panthers will not disclose his injury or status ahead of Game 5. So the Florida Panthers coach Paul Maurice has yet to decide on whether injured Injured star Matthew Kachuk will play in Game 5 of the Stanley Cup Finals tonight. That is 8 p.m. on TNT. The Panthers trail the Golden Knights three games to one in the Stanley Cup Final. Kachuk leads the Panthers in goals, 11 and points, 24. He has been their most most valuable forward in the playoffs with their four-game Four game-winning goals, three of them coming in overtime. Reading is hard. A check on the diamond, and it is not the kind that you put in your ears. The Pittsburgh Pirates were had off yesterday after beating the Mets 2-1. to one. They, Again, I covered that yesterday, so they still sit atop the NL Central one game ahead of the Milwaukee Brewers. The Baltimore Orioles pushed their win streak to four games with an 11-3 win over the Kansas City Royals. They are now just five game backs of the Tampa Bay Rays. And speaking of the Tampa Bay Rays, unfortunately... Their one-game win streak stopped at that. They lose to the Athletics four games to three. They still are MLB best, 48-21. and 21. However, now, like I said, they are only just five games up on the Orioles for first place. The University of South Florida Board of Trustees have approved a $340 million budget to build a 35,000 seat on campus football stadium in one of, for one of the largest campuses in the world that in UCF they are putting a campus in the middle of downtown Tampa where they are on the campus which is in Tampa uh, they normally play at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, home of the Buccaneers. That does not nearly fill out because no one goes to USF football games because they are trash. The board authorized $200 million in debt spending to fund the majority of the stadium project to open project to open for the 2026 season, so three years from now. The rest of the money is expected to come through donations and other university funds. According to the Tampa Bay Times, the cost is not expected to be finalized until next year. Until that is approved, the school can change its mind on the project without penalty. So depending on who you ask, this is good and it's bad. It's good for their football team because now students, instead of going out and to the bars on Friday night or Saturday afternoon or whenever. Now they can stay on campus and get drunk and then go to a football game. That's what we always love. Uh, however, I do see that will probably end up raising tuitions. I totally get that, and I totally see it. They are pouring money into a football program that historically just absolutely blows like a whale spout. So you take the good with the bad. Again, football – and sports, university sports and college athletics, um, but mostly football, will fund a lot of the colleges through the next couple um, decades. So that's where most universities, I'm going to guess, is going to put a majority of their funds, and we'll have to see how it plays out. 
That'll do it for this rendition of the 10 Minutes Source Report. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, come back tomorrow to see if the Vegas Golden Knights can complete the five-game gentleman sweep of the Florida Panthers or if Matthew Kachuk will play tonight and not be um, a little crybaby and decide to play. And hopefully have his team win. I'm just kidding. Hockey players are some of the toughest players in the world. Until I see you tomorrow, wash your hands, you filthy animals. God bless you all, and peace out.